are here with a brand new guest, yes. and it's Brian Kroll. Nice, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. Happy Wednesday. Uh, happy right. July. Happy, happy Wednesday. July Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So where you, where do you where did you grow up? Where didn't I grow up? <laughs> yeah, where did where up. didn't you grow up? Usual migration. Born in Queens, lived in Brooklyn till I was eight. Born in Queens, in Kew Gardens. Born in Kew Gardens. So do you guys know each other from Queens? I, I no. don't know Brian from Queens, but I, ha I have to tell you, I, he is so talented, and uh, I, he, he just he does amazing things. He just does amazing. We're going to see some of his work very shortly. But uh, when I first when I first found out about Brian, um, I I just loved the name. Of Band, my son the bum because I can I can relate to that. Do you have a son? No, but I was but I was called the bum. Oh, you were the <laughs> son of the bum. I was the bum. Was like, in other words, like what happened was is that they used to say to me, uh, "So when are you gonna get a real job?" Oh yeah. You know, always always that. But you did get a real job. I got and I still get I still they still call me a bum. Really? It doesn't matter. I, I have a right. So do you have a son? No, no children. Are you son the bum? No, my inner child's a bum. Your inner child is a bum. Yeah. What about your outer child? <laughs> so, so it's about you? Even if I wasn't narcissistic, it is all about me. Oh, but in this day and age, who isn't truthful? That's true. I if mean, you know you're a narcissist, does that mean you're not one? I don't know, because it's, I was told by like a really smart um, forensic psychologist that if you think you're crazy, you're not. It's the ones that don't think they're crazy. Those are the ones you worry about. Yeah, that's true. Actually. That's what he told me. He, uh, he testified for people. Like he, they called him. His name's Al Levitt. He worked in City Hall in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. They would call him to go meet people. Do you know him? No. Why are you laughing? Thinking of Levittown. Oh, <laughs> Levittown, like Pennsylvania, yeah. Long Island. Long Island. Yeah, Long there's Island. two. Yeah. Yeah, but it's by the same person. It's the same Levitt, but not him. Al Levitt's not that Levitt. Name the town after himself. Does that mean he would be narcissistic? Or Probably, he, right? He just wants to leave a legacy. But he's not that Levin. But okay. he, anyway, he like testified for Hinkley. Yes. Like they called him in to see if he was crazy or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, this guy like did a lot of people. Like he wrote a book and he's just like amazing. But um, what I'm saying is, do you think you're crazy? <laughs> That's the problem. It's a matter of perception. <laughs> I don't think he's great. I think he's very talented. He's a great guitar player. He uh, he writes great songs. And they're also different. Is that the, the theme of it? If you think so. Well, that's what you think. I'm thinking about the next three albums. I don't think about the ones that are very finished. He's, 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 that's for you to decide. He he he, he seems like 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 a nowhere man. While he, while he's writing, he's also reviewing the type of thing. So. What was that thing from so far in my head? South of my thinking, I, I get there 10 minutes before I actually arrive, and I've timed that before I feel and say, why took you so long? Exactly. To yourself? Yes, to myself. Yes. Interesting. So how many of them are you? How many albums? No, how many are, uh, like, uh, you? I don't know. If I counted them, it would spoil the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, um... Yeah, 3,000 hours of psychoanalysis. You can really dodge these questions. Is that how many hours you've had? Yeah, two therapists died, two retired, and I'm still here. So, Good so you outlived all your therapy? Yeah. And you stopped going? You're like Henry VIII. Yeah, they said it would be therapeutic if you quit <laughs> therapy, so I left. <laughs> you've had four? So you still I have I have a song, my therapist said your therapist is wrong. <laughs> you know, you're in a relationship. <laughs> I just I have, I have to say that I just I just love his humor and I and I think his songs is like so uh, like they're very witty. They, they have a they have a, a, a very they have a very interesting uh, background to it. So is your sarcasm like supposed to be funny or is it supposed to be? That's a very personal, subjective thing. Somebody somebody said to me once, if you don't mind me saying it, you seem like you're a little sarcastic. I said, if you think that's sarcastic, I'm in trouble because I was very. 1.5 on a scale of 10. So oh, do you remember what you were saying? <laughs> Anybody yet? <laughs> I'm not reaching. <laughs> so it was more than a 1.5. It was something about. It was more like a 7. Not to me, it was. It depends. 
with this whole thing going on in the country. I kept saying, <laughs> oh, I was in Rosedale, and I said, I have to get there early to make sure, you know, I get a little nervous driving through here. They said, why would you get nervous driving through here and parking and walking around the block? I didn't think that was sarcastic. They thought it was something. Well, it's, it's all the way. It's all in the delivery, you know. I said, somebody said to me, "You're not just white boy. You're a pure white boy." Mm. Big as you were. So, yeah. how, so how did you basically? What were your influences? You know, because my my music sarcastic rock and roll also. That's why I I feel it's like bond between me and Ryan. But um, like, so how did it start? Who influences? And and how do you get inspired to do your song? You know, however it comes, I'll take it. How long does it usually take you to write to, to get a song? Is it instantaneous or, or, or do you sometimes it combusts, like trying to catch it because I won't remember it like, the next day. Sometimes, do you write them all down? Like, are you write? Do you write songs every day? Like, I still record on cassettes sometimes if necessary. Oh, that's your skeleton. Yeah. So then here, take a ginger snap. I'll use later. All right. Me and, I don't get along with sugar too well. Do you like to write a lot about your personal life, or do you like to write more about, you know, um, like things that are that are in the news that are happening, or you know, things that uh, that you see going on around you in the world? On the microcosmic scale here. Because I, you know, I mean, you know, you uh, pick a song, I'll tell you. No, I'm just saying, you know, it seems. Yeah. But that was by accident. Somebody said you write social commentary songs. I said I never wrote a social. So I want social commentary just by texting. All right, what? you want to see that? What, what, you just give a little intro, because we have a little video of death by texting. Yes. And great, did that great, come great about video. like as... That was spontaneous combustion. Couple did you do the animation yourself? No, I, I picked the person the team that did it. Do you want to say who they are? They're, <laughs> They're anonymous? They're anonymous. anonymous. Okay. okay. All right, let's see Death by Texting. Check this out. <laughs> She didn't see it coming Death by texting She didn't see it coming Death by texting Drove and texted Eyes not on the street She had no clue That her cars were soon to meet See her driving down the street down the street the new brand the road kill me road kill me in car A she couldn't see couldn't see I was the guy driving in car B just another texting moron the texting in the cell just another texting moron give it to your cell phone's bill just another texting moron the texting in the cell just another texting moron Coming, death by texting. He didn't see it coming. Death by texting. People stood and stared. It was quite vexing. They didn't see it coming. Death by texting. See her driving down the street. Down the street, the new brand. in heaven, sitting with St. Pete, we hit our phones, tried to be discreet, we saw St. Peter, he looked perplexed, he said you got here early, but still you want a text, just another texting moron, the texting in the cell, just another texting moron. So that was death by texting. Now, do you know anyone that ever had that happen to them? My, my friend's father got hit by a woman, 22 year old young lady who was texting and driving, and he died a couple days later. Oh, oh God. It is the new don't drink and drive, right? Don't text and drive? It's I think he was ahead of himself getting murdered by people texting and driving. Uh, I think it's more popular now. Because everybody does it. it I mean, it's, it's really, it, it used to be just talking on your cell phone. Right. And that was dangerous enough. Yes. And now it's texting. Like, it's hard not to text when you, you 
got to keep your phone like in the back seat. It, it's yeah. very, it's very dangerous. It's a great message, yeah. and uh, you know the thing is, is that I think today it's like everybody, you know, you're in a light, and nobody's going. The light's yeah, green. Exactly. Light, <laughs> light, 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 Twenty, twenty seconds. We're checking their face. Right, page. And, and you know that they. You know, it's not their brakes, or it's not right. you know, it's anything. And then you know, then all of a sudden, I'm giving them the, I'm giving them then, the horn, yeah. afraid that, that somebody's going to get out and like kill me. I know you don't know they, anymore, right? They don't know road rage. Yeah. And basically, it's like, oh, okay, I got to get back to driving. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Did you did, text and drive? No. Did you ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I have to say I didn't. But I don't speed do dialing it. is a gateway. Yeah. But now cars have it like you can <laughs> talk to the car and they'll tell you who to call, right? No, they'll get it right no. after about the 10th time. I try to put it in the airplane, on airplane mode. Yes. Oh, that's, that's good. That's a good idea, actually. My, my door is ajar when my phone is in airplane mode. My door is ajar. See, the thing is, is that, you know, like I wear a Bluetooth, you know, I wear oh. and, and I do. And now we're in the never miss a phone call club. Yeah. Oh, everybody. You know, and, I, and usually, you know, I, you know, all I have to do is just like, you know, tap it, and then I get the phone call. Oh. But for me to like to like be doing like all this stuff, and, and now you can actually do it voice. Uh, uh, That's what case. I mean. Yeah. I, you can actually you do can. that too. But yeah. I, I didn't write that song to be a social commentary. Though. So what you write it for? Just uh, for fun? I was walking. I was visiting somebody at Long Beach Medical Center in Long Beach. We were up before Sandy closed it. Uh, the hurricane. Yeah. You know? yeah. And. Um, Young business lady walked out of the um, emergency room, skirt, high heel shoes, texting, walked off the sidewalk, and you really don't know that that's a one way street. <laughs> oh no! If you're she in a hurry and you don't live around, no. But oh, that's when I started hearing right. in my head, see you walking down the street. Oh, okay. Then the brand of the road kill me. Oh, yeah. I got it. Right. If I'm thinking everyone will see me and everyone's thinking I'll see them, then that was. Yeah, it's a yeah. very common yeah. situation these days. Yeah, I used to make fun. There's another texting moron. They looked down and found out I was one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and then I was said, oh my God, I'm just another texting moron. Yeah. And um, so I went to a music store and, and the person was texting. I walked up and I said, you know, I used to make fun of all these texting morons, so I realized I was one. She looked up and she said, yeah, you know, text, you're right, texting does something to your brain. So I, think that's, I think that in the song. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So that was that. And the decapitated beheaded was easy. Yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. I like hear rage against the machine. Yeah. yeah. They do what they told you. Decapitated beheaded. Well, you are like Henry VIII, see? Henry VIII? I, I didn't kill my wives. Is that no, I was talking about your therapist. <laughs> oh. Two died, two quit, whatever, retired. And two were specialized. Yeah, and now you're talking about decapitation. So, like, I think you have a Henry VIII thing going on. Yeah. Is that because I live in my head so much? I just figure who eats the rest of the body? I don't know. Save money on the <laughs> so Where do you find this guy, David? I love Brian. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, so what's going to be, what's happening next? I heard you said you're in the studio now. I'm working on songs that more for me. They're button. No tongue in cheek, sarcastic ones. Although, some are they love songs? Them. Did you ever write a love song? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Like what? They're on my hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody gets to hear that? Maybe them? that's my skeleton. Okay. I, have, I have two fully recorded love songs, and one has a, what do we call it? A real string quartet and a real Hammond organ. Wow, did you know that? So you have a song side. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. All right. I think Brian is due to start gigging very soon. Have you ever gigged? Do you gig? Or do you just record and make music like that? Well, I send other people's music out. That's why. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And tell us about that. Well, I got tired of internet and community radio. Nothing personal. But right. You know, the 3,000 independent bands in that circuit. I'd rather send other people's music and it's more fun. To where? Whatever station. Oh, that's nice. Though. I had a rejection yeah. against them. I had an unreleased song called Anger Management Dropout. Okay. And they played that more, so I got angry with sending it to us. Ah. <laughs> no, I like sending it other people's stuff. That's wonderful. Where do you send it most? Any special places? Well, some places. Anyone that's worth mentioning? Oh, 
with the internet radio wars out there, I will stay. I'm, I'm dodging that. You're taking the fifth? Yeah, you gotta take the I'm seeding the fence on that one. All right. But he, but Brian is very talented. He writes great songs. It, uh, that Death by Texting is a great song. And uh, and what's your website? How do people find you and get to listen to your music and stuff? My son, the bump, M Y S O N, the bump. Is that what your parents used to call you? I don't remember. <laughs> I wasn't listening. Right. I was probably thinking I'm going to write a song about what you just said when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> but you can check out more stuff yeah. on his website. Yeah. My son, the bum. My favorite video is Flight Deck for Christmas. Okay, yeah. all right. And it's very, very good stuff. Very, yes. very good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing your strangeness. Happy Wednesday, everyone. <laughs> Would you like to push a button? I have a song called Button Pusher. Oh. Yeah. Well, this should be very you should put it on the Rolling Hoop page. <laughs> That's so appropriate for you. Brian Kroll. Right. Yeah, thank you so much. Genius. Yeah. All right.